Good afternoon and welcome to the Cathedral of the Sacred Heart. My name is uh, Father Anthony Marks. I'm the parish priest here uh, at the cathedral. The cathedral uh, will turn 116 uh, in less than two weeks. So um, uh, every wedding day is a, a beautiful celebration to think about uh, the hundreds if not thousands of couples uh, who have been married here at uh, the foot of the Lord's altar. I'll be joined today by Deacon uh, VJ from uh, St. Bridget's who will be uh, proclaiming the homily or proclaiming the gospel rather and then preaching the homily. Uh, in just a moment when the bell is rung please stand for the entrance uh, procession. Uh, the parts of the order of mass uh, are listed in the program. Thank you and welcome.
the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grace to you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Adam Patrick and Constance Christen, the church shares your joy and warmly welcomes you together with your families and friends as today in the presence of God our Father you establish between yourselves a lifelong partnership. May the Lord hear you on this your joyful day. May he send you help from heaven and protect you. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill every one of your prayers. Let us pray. Be attentive to our prayers, O Lord, and in your kindness pour out your grace on these your servants, Adam Patrick and Constance Christen, that coming together before your altar they may be confirmed in love for one another. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Kindly be seated as we listen to God's word. A reading from the book of Tobit. On their wedding night, Tobiah rose from bed and said to his wife, Sister, get up. Let's pray and beg our Lord to have mercy on us and to grant us deliverance. Sarah got up and they started to pray and beg that deliverance might be theirs. They began with these words. Blessed are you, O God of our fathers. Praise be your name forever and ever. Let the heavens and all your creation praise you forever. You made Adam, and you gave him his wife Eve to be his help and support. And from these two, the human race descended. You said, it is not good for the man to be alone. Let us make him a partner like himself. Now, Lord, you know that I take this wife of mine, not because of lust, but for a noble purpose. 
Call down your mercy on me and on her, and allow us to live together to a happy old age. They said together, Amen, Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, let mutual love continue. Do not neglect hospitality, for some, for through it some have unknowingly entertained angels. Be mindful of prisoners as of sharing their imprisonment, and of the ill-treated as of yourselves, for you are also in the body. Let marriage be honored among all, and the marriage bed be kept undefiled. Let your life be free from love of money, but be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never forsake you or abandon you. Thus, we may say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, and I will not be afraid. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, o Lord. 
Jesus said, From the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You may be seated. Well, Adam, Connie, you're finally here. Uh, I know your family and friends are very pleased and excited to be here with you today to celebrate. It's It's been a long time that the two of you been, have been together, and so everybody has waited, and here you are. So it's a wonderful day. Um, I do want to let your family and friends know that I now understand how Adam and Connie make you wait. Um, you should have seen how long it took them to get me their baptism certificates. So that was... <laughs> Uh, just, I had to say that one more time. <laughs> um, Connie, last night I was I was talking with your dad and your brother. We were having a nice conversation. I had a nice conversation with both parents. Actually, it was it was very nice. And um, your your dad and your brother uh, were kind of marveling. Uh, all of us were at the grandeur of this church and the beauty of it. And it's fitting that we're in a church of this magnitude for a wedding um, because it naturally makes us humble. And it reminds us, going upward, if we look upward, of where we want to go. It reminds us of transcendence. So here you are in this place, in this space, this magnificent church, and here you are in this time, in this moment, about to experience the, the wonderful sacrament of matrimony. And as wonderful as all of it is, uh, we need to get you from these temporal situations of this space and this time, this day, and start you on the path to what is, to take what is here today and to put it in here. And to, to, to take what is, is now here at this level in your relationship and in your union together and to elevate it and to help it to transcend. So that's, that's what you're starting to do today. So this church symbolizes not only the union that the two of you have now, but it reminds us that this union is going to be amplified and elevated to a, another level, a supernatural level, through the grace and power of the sacrament of matrimony. Now, you know, we've talked about this in, in our many sessions together, that a Christian marriage isn't simply a union between the two of you. It is that, but it's not just that. It's also a union with God. And this means that it reaches beyond space and time, because God reaches beyond space and time. And so it has eternal potential. And it doesn't stay, your marriage won't stay stuck in what's temporal, whether that's the, the worries of the day, or your looks, or how much money you have. But as we've talked about, we're focusing on something more. And we're focusing on what we talked about as the Christian definition of love, which is to will the good of another as another. So, Connie, you'll love Adam as Adam, and for Adam. And Adam, you'll love Connie as Connie, and for Connie. And even more, you'll help one another to, be, to become more holy and to get to heaven. That's a pretty amazing thing that you can do through a marriage. And there's a stark difference between this kind of love and a purely romantic love. Now, you know, one has the potential to be wonderful. Romantic love is wonderful in its own way. But the other has a potential to lead to holiness that can lead us all the way to heaven, to eternity with God. The other is limited in this world, focuses on what's physical. And again, while that's good and necessary, and it has to be practiced in, in, in a moral way and in a, pers in a perspective that we have to understand that it, it, it's subordinate to what is truly important, then that is that your deeper love is a selfless love that seeks higher goods than just what this earth and this world, and even the two of you as just human beings, have to offer one another. The best kind of love involves an act of the will, 
we bend our will to God first, and I hope the two of you will do that, and then to one another. And from this higher calling will come your children someday. And the Lord Jesus Christ instituted this sacrament and blesses this union. And in the gospel that the two of you chose for us to hear, we hear Jesus confirm very clearly what marriage is and what marriage does. A man and a woman become one flesh. And that's literal and physical, but more importantly, it's spiritual and it's, and it's transcendent and it's supernatural. And this can only be achieved by one man and one woman. And in order to achieve the whole good that God intends with marriage, your marriage and the whole institution of marriage must remain undefiled in that way. So we also hear very clearly in the reading you chose from the book of Tobit, which was proclaimed very well by your dad, Adam. On their wedding night, the first thing that Tobiah and Sarah do is they pray. Now, they probably had a party first, okay, and you're going to have one of those, and that's good, and it's right to celebrate. But as soon as they were alone, they turned their hearts, their minds, and their eyes to God in humble praise, thanksgiving, and supplication. So their mutual gaze is towards God. And I hope in all the time we've spent together that you understand that's what I want for the two of you. I hope in all the time we've spent together in that little parlor over at St. Bridget, that's always too cold, right? That I've helped you to understand that your gaze should be upon God the Father through Jesus Christ and with the help of the Holy Spirit that you will achieve something very transcendent. So seek God together. Put him first. Repeatedly ask yourselves, what does God want to accomplish through our marriage? Not necessarily, what are we going to accomplish? What does God want to accomplish through our marriage? And let Jesus Christ lead you in the ways of love and imitate that love, which culminates, as we know, with complete self-giving. And in your case, self-giving to God and to one another. And as I've said, probably way too many times for you all to want to hear it again, come to Mass together. Go to Mass. Make the Mass your greatest mutual prayer, imitating Tobiah and Sarah, as we heard in the reading, and doing that weekly, to pray together in that very special way, and to receive from the greatest sacrament we have, which is the Eucharist. So when you're bring, when you're in, and then when your union brings children into the world, teach them what you've learned about the love of God and the love you have for one another. Let that love radiate out to others in need as well. And let your marriage be a path to holiness for you and for others. Let everyone see your marriage as a witness to a deep and abiding and eternal love. And I say that with love to you both. Please stand. Invite the couple accompanied by the wedding party to please approach the altar. Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. 
through a special sacrament. He strengthens and enriches those he has already consecrated by holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Adam Patrick and Constance Christen, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? I have. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? I am. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God, to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? I am. Since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. I, Adam Patrick. I, Adam Patrick. Take you, Constance Christen. Take you, Constance Christen. For my lawful wife. For my lawful wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better or for worse. For better or worse. For richer or for poor. For richer or poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until death do us part. Until death do us part. I, Constance Christen. I, Constance Christen. Take you, Adam Patrick. Take you, Adam Patrick. For my lawful husband. For my lawful husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poor. For richer, for poor. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Until death do us part. Until death do us part. May the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God who joined together our first parents in paradise, strengthen and bless in Christ the consent you have declared before the church, so that what God joins together, no one may put asunder. May the Lord bless these rings, which you will give to each other as a, law, as a sign of love and fidelity. Amen. Constance Christen. Repeat. Constance Christen. Receive this ring. Receive this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Adam Patrick. Adam Patrick. Receive this ring. Receive this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, 
as we call to mind the special gift of grace and charity by which God has been pleased to crown and consecrate the love of our sister Constance Kristen and our brother Adam Patrick, let us commend them to the Lord. Graciously pour out upon this husband and wife, O Lord, the spirit of your love to make them one heart and one soul, so that nothing whatever may divide those you have joined, and no harm come to those you have filled with your blessing. Through Christ our Lord. Kindly be seated. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Please stand. Receive in your kindness, Lord, the offerings we bring in gladness before you. And in your fatherly love, watch over those who have joined in a sacramental covenant through Christ our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in him you have made a new covenant with your people, so that as you have redeemed man and woman by the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, so in Christ you might make them partakers of divine nature and joint heirs with him of heavenly glory. In the union of husband and wife, you give a sign of Christ's loving gift of grace so that the sacrament we celebrate might draw us back more deeply into the wondrous design of your love. And so with the angels and all the saints, we praise you and without end we acclaim. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and bury our bishop and all the clergy. Be mindful also, Lord, of Adam Patrick and Constance Christen, whom you have brought to their wedding day, 
so that by your grace they may abide in mutual love and in peace. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, all we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Please stand. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Invite the newly married couple to please kneel as they prepare to receive the nuptial blessing as the assembly remains standing. Dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to the Lord that on these his servants, now married in Christ, he may mercifully pour out the blessing of his grace and make of one heart and love by the sacrament of Christ's body and blood those he is joined by a holy covenant. Let us pray for them in silence. O God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing, and when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, for man and woman in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, that they might no longer be two but one flesh, and taught that what you were pleased to make one, must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery, that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ and his church. O God, by whom woman is joined to man, and the companionship they had in the beginning is endowed with the one blessing, not forfeited by original sin, nor washed away by the flood. Look now with favor on these your servants, joined together in marriage, who ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit, and pour your love into their hearts, that they may remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter, Constance Christen, and let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May her husband entrust his heart to her, so that acknowledging her as his equal and his joint heir to the life of grace, 
he may show her to honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And now, Lord, we implore you, may these your servants hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments made one in the flesh. May they be blameless in all they do. And with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear true witness to Christ before all. May they be blessed with children and prove themselves virtuous parents who live to see their children's children. And grant that reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope, they may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Invite the newly married couple to please stand. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us now offer to one another the sign of peace. Please kneel. At this moment in the celebration of Holy Mass, the Church invites forward practicing Roman Catholics to receive the Lord's body and blood in Holy Communion. I'm aware that on occasions such as weddings, we're joined by a larger circle of family members and friends some of whom perhaps are no longer Catholic, Catholics practicing or perhaps persons of other denominations or religions. Uh, for those not receiving Holy Communion today, uh, you're more than welcome to approach either uh, the deacon or I for a blessing. In this case, if you're not receiving communion, please fold your arms in front and the deacon and I will be happy to impart God's blessing to you. Behold the Lamb of God, and behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Please stand. Let us pray. Having been made partakers at your table, we pray, O Lord, that those who are united by the sacrament of marriage may always hold fast to you and proclaim your name to the world through Christ our Lord. Invite the newly married couple to please approach the foot of the altar accompanied by the wedding party to receive the final and solemn blessing. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, the all-powerful Father, grant you his joy and bless you in your children. Amen. May the only begotten Son of God stand by you with compassion in good times and in bad. Amen. May the Holy Spirit of God always pour forth his love into your hearts. Amen. And may, may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Amen.